guys, it's you, mate. Welcome to my channel, and today we're gonna dive into the world of Naruto, particularly focusing on the three iconic characters Kakashi, Sarutomi, and Jiraiya. The three great yet flawed mentors of Konoha. And don't get me wrong, these men are great men. They're loyal to the village, they protect their homes with their life. But they're also very human. And these nuances of man is what makes the story of Naruto very deep. And so we'll explore the strengths and weaknesses of them as mentors and analyze what makes them great yet flawed teachers. First up, we have our favorite Kakashi Sensei. And Kakashi is the copycat ninja skilled, experienced shinobi who becomes the mentor of Team 7, uh, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. And his strength, of course, is his fast knowledge of ninjutsu, genjutsu, taijutsu. Basically, he's great at them. Like, it allows him to effectively teach his students a wide range of techniques and strategies. Another of his strengths is his patience. Despite the Team 7, especially in the beginning, are just like annoying brats, Kakashi remains quite patient and understanding, helping each of them to grow at their own pace. And the third strength is he has a wide range of personal experience. As a former member of the Anbu, the Black Ops Elite, he uses his, ex his personal experiences to teach his students about teamwork, loyalty, and protecting their comrades. And we also see how Kakashi is really willing to protect his students. Like, in the wave arc, for example, when they met with a dangerous opponent, Zabuza Momochi, Kakashi steps in to protect his students, uh, protecting them, even putting himself at risk. And by doing so, he actually teaches them the importance of protecting your comrades and your friends and the value of things. But Kakashi is not a perfect sensei. He has his fair share of weaknesses. And one of his main flaws as a teacher is, is his initial inability to address the individual needs of his students. Like he struggles to connect personally with Sasuke on an emotional level, which contributes to Sasuke's eventual descent into darkness. Uh, we also don't really see much examples of him connecting to Sakura and Naruto on a personal level either. And another, uh, the second weakness of Kakashi is his inability to provide equal attention to his three mentees. And while he recognizes Sasuke's potential and spent a considerable amount training him to develop his skills, he inadvertently neglects Naruto and Sakura. And we see this really pointedly in the Chunen uh, exam arc, for example. Kakashi focuses his attention on Sasuke, training him Chidori, his technique, and leaving Naruto and Sakura to train on his own on their own and this unequal attention contributes to the growing rift of Sasuke with his teammates and hinders Naruto's and Sakura's development during the crucial stage of their career as a shinobi. So yes, I love Kakashi as a character but his teaching methods, there are rooms for improvement. Let's move to the second character I want to talk about Sarutobi, the third Hokage. And he is an experienced leader and a teacher for the legendary Sanin, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru. So it's obvious that he was able to teach 
these kids to and grow them to be the legendary standard by teaching them all so all the different techniques and how to be a good shinobi and he imparts them valuable lessons and wisdom shaping them into the powerhouse we know and he probably also like encouraged them as individual and as team member fostering once a strong bond between the three sunny but heroes and sarutobi also has glaring weakness it's his inability to address personal issues especially to his student Orochimaru and his failure to recognize and confront Orochimaru growing obsession with immorality, power, and inhuman experimentations are actually what ultimately leads to Orochimaru's betrayal of Konoha we also see this inability to address personal issues as he tries to never confront Gantu but that's another story but one thing I think what Sarutobi did was kind of unforgivable is his neglect towards Naruto and as the Ohokage firstly he has the responsibility to look after Naruto being the container the bird who carries the burden of the nine tails the Kyubi and Naruto's father, the previous Hokage, Minato, sacrificed himself to protect the village and seal the QB instead inside of Naruto. So it's Naruto's responsibility to ensure that Naruto grows up happy, loved, and protected. Or at the very least, he should have good house, good shelter, and good nutritious food not like instant noodles every single day since his childhood you know however Sarutobi failed to provide Naruto with any of these things and he failed to provide support and guidance Naruto needed in his childhood he didn't even know who his parents are and Naruto is left being isolated and ostracized by the whole village and throughout Naruto's early years, Sarutobi's passive approach allowed the villagers to treat Naruto unfairly due to this nine tail seal within him. And this lack of intervention from Sarutobi's part left Naruto feeling lonely and desperate for attention. We're lucky Naruto ended up being this cheerful guy who dreams to save his village not this vengeful guy who wants to destroy the village you know and what we have is i think a village sanction abandonment essential and it's very hard to forgive sarutobi for this because he had years and he never did anything <sighs> now let's move to our third mentor Jiraiya and Jiraiya the Toad Sage is a powerful and skilled Sanin who becomes Naruto's mentor and we see his strength beside his strength and battle prowess is his personal connection towards Naruto it goes beyond just mentorship or a sensei teaching techniques we see how Jiraiya becomes somewhat a father figure towards Naruto and this personal connection allows Jiraiya to teach Naruto valuable life lessons and help him to become mature as a person and as a mentor Jiraiya also has this amazing adaptability in his training methods he recognizes Naruto's learning style that he learns by doing, not by reading books, and helping him to unlock his potential and master powerful techniques like the Rasengan and also the Sage Mode. But we know Jiraiya is far from perfect. Uh, his absence during Naruto's childhood, despite being his godfather, 
whose literal job as a godfather is to take care of Naruto in case something happens to Minato and Koshina. And despite having this godfather status and having this strong connection to his parents, Jiraiya abandoned Naruto. And this can be seen as another form of neglect that Naruto experienced in his early childhood life. Had Jiraiya been present during Naruto's early life, he might have been able to provide the emotional and support and guidance that Naruto needed, possibly preventing some of the hardship that Naruto faced growing up. And he only steps in and becoming actively involved in Naruto's art only after his encounter with Akatsuki during the search for Sumo. Now, his second weakness has to do with Jiraiya's overconfidence in his own abilities, which can sometimes lead to recklessness. And this is evident in his decision to face pain alone. And he it eventually resolved. Yeah. Anyway, so there you have it. A closer look at the great yet flawed mentors of Konoha. Kakashi, Sarutobi, and Jiraiya. And each mentor has their own strengths and weaknesses, but their impacts on the students and the world of Naruto is undeniable. And what are your thoughts regarding these mentors? Uh, let us know in the comments below. And anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please hit like that like button and subscribe to my channel. I upload a video every week. See ya!